Let's talk about what the end user sees and thinks about when they're using a faceted classification system. Uh, I would contend that in as much as users think about faceted classification systems at all, they're thinking about them as somewhat confused or let's just say it's uncategorized. So the faceted classification system is sitting there, they're using it, but I don't know that they particularly think hard about what exactly is being presented. And if they think at all, they think sometimes that they're searching. It seems like some kind of a search. They're specifying parameters, but it's not like the search they usually used to. They don't, they don't type into fields and then hit enter. They're more clicking to do a search. Often, and probably more often, it's thought about as browsing. I'm browsing through items. Now, browse is something we usually associate with a hierarchy. When you think you're browsing through uh, a catalog, for example, or browsing through a book, or browsing through a bookstore, you think usually that you're going into the section that you're interested in, and you're looking around, and you're seeing how things are laid out in that section. So the user will either think that this is some kind of search, or they usually think that this is some kind of browse. It's loosely associated with a hierarchy, which I'll come back to in a little, in a little bit. That's the perspective, if they have any perspective at all. Oftentimes, a faceted classification system is strange enough, it's different enough from anything they've seen elsewhere, that they really don't think about it at all. Sometimes they don't even use it. Sometimes it just seems too complicated and weird, and an end user will steer away from it. But if they like it, and if they use it, it's because everything is explicit and apparent in a faceted classification system. So all of the terms that describe the items that I might want to find, they're all sitting there on the screen. They're all nicely arrayed on the screen. And I'll contrast that the same way that I've contrasted in other, um, in other talks, the difference between a book index and the index that you often see on a computer screen. The index that you often see on a computer screen is a drop-down list, has all of the terms in the drop-down list, and it's nice enough at least that when you start typing a term, uh, that term scrolls to the top, right? You can get to the term that you want if you happen to know the first few letters. If you don't, you may be lost forever because you can't, you can't really see that whole, that whole index. Now, think of an index in the back of a book. The index in the back of a book is a full screen presentation of, that, of the terms. It has multiple columns. You can see on one page of the book maybe 100 terms. You can get a feeling for the bulk. You can get a feeling for the distribution of terms. If you don't know exactly what a term is, you can scan up and down very easily. You can page through that index. It's all arrayed. It's all explicit. It's all on the quote unquote screen for you all at the same time. And that's something about a faceted classification system that's very attractive as well. All the terms are nicely arrayed on the screen at the same time. And in, in fact, similarly also to a book index, all the terms have some indication of how much is about this term. If you look in a faceted classification system, you see that following each of the terms is a number of items that are responsive to that term, that match that term, that are indexed by that term. In the same way, if you look in a book index, the number of different page numbers next to a term is an indication of how often this thing is used. So if I look in a faceted classification system and I see the number 100 next to a term versus the number 10 next to the term, I have the feeling that that's an important term, that's a term that's widely used, that's a term that is um, very operative. Whereas a term that has 10 or 1 or 3 next to it shows me that that term is not as operative, that's not as important a term, it's not as widely used. So when users like faceted classification, that's the reason they like faceted classification, because it's all arrayed on the screen. It's all there in front of you. You can get a, a kind of a comprehensive view of how these terms are categorized. You also get a comprehensive view of the categories of categorization. What are the important things that these items are listed by? Date and author and names mentioned and companies mentioned, whatever it is, whatever all the different ways of categorization are that are in the facets, they're all out there on the screen. The next thing that users like about, about faceted classification, when they like it, is that it progressively reveals items. So you can choose one word that you think describes the items, you can scan through all the results and see, ah, is that where I'm going? Now nah, I'm not going, and it's very easy to back up. It's very easy to go and choose a different word. And then on the other hand, it's very easy to continually narrow and focus your results and show that, um, First, I clicked on term A. Term A gave me 100 results. And now I see all the terms that apply to those 100 results. Not all the terms that apply to all results, but only the terms that reply to those results. It's a progressive revealing of items. It's a progressive uh, searching through those items. It's a progressive browsing through those items. And it gives us this feeling of 
narrowing down the results until I get to something that I really want, until I get to the few hits, the few items that, um, that are what I really want. So how does it work literally? Just as I explained, I click on an item, it filters or it, or it progressively reveals only those items that have that value that I clicked on. And then either I get to the one I want or I click on another one. Every time I click on another one, the facets themselves update to show me only the facets that are responsive to the new set of items. And eventually I come to a small set of items and hopefully it's the ones that I want. Now, one extra thing that I'll add on the end here is as I click through those items, oftentimes they're revealed as a sort of a set of breadcrumbs or even a hierarchy that says under this index term, under this index term, under this index terms are the ones you want. And that's why to a lot of people a faceted classification appears as a hierarchy and how they think of it as a hierarchy. And in fact, they think of it as a poly hierarchy because the same item can appear under multiple branches and they feel that what they're building is a hierarchy. And on the surface, that's true. But what we'll see as we dive into the guts of a, of a facet classification is that there, it's not a hierarchy at all, it's a set of indexes. Sorry guys, come on in.